Hi everyone, Karis here. I'm in a park in Tucson right now, and despite the deceptive palm trees, it's really cold, like really cold. So, this is the third of a three-parter little video series that's of a very personal nature, which I did. And I just had to record this last one to update you guys on what's going on. And I'll also tell you why, because I didn't know why I was recording any of them. To be honest, it seems like something like a pregnancy, which is what they were about, are about, since this is one, is a private thing, you know, but for some reason I had to. And then after all of it was over and I asked why I shared it, why I was called to share it, because it's been a very intense journey, I got told why, and I'll tell you that too. Okay, so here's what happened. The last videos I shot were when I was first discovering that I was pregnant, which I was, for a very short time, because after I recorded the videos, I kind of recorded them in the oh shit mode, I'm gonna have a baby, this is bananas, I shouldn't even be pregnant, what's going on, oh well, let's roll with it and bring in this child that wanted so badly to come in. So what ended up happening after the first fear reaction was I started noticing all the enculturated beliefs that were coming to me about pregnancy, about how it makes your life so hard, and about how, you know, it's so much harder financially, and it's so much harder physically, and, and then I started having all these weird fears about my body, and I noticed that there is a very underlying belief that when you're pregnant, it's kind of the same as being sick. Like, you're scared to mess something up as if the body can't handle it or something, which doesn't really make sense. But Anyway, right after all of that stuff happened, and then it kind of faded away, because as soon as a new fear-based or old paradigm type of belief would rise up, I would notice it and switch it out with a new one. So what ended up happening a couple days later was this beautiful blossoming of an amazing freedom, because if I was manifesting a reality for a being coming in who I wanted to do the absolute best I could for and create a paradisical kind of reality so this being could go as far as they can on their own evolutionary ladder she could on her own evolutionary ladder because she did show up in people's dreams before they knew I was pregnant that blew my mind a little bit or a lot anyway if all those things are true then I no longer had the option to create a crappy reality it's not like the reality I'm creating right now is crappy <laughs> far from it I pretty much love my life but any fears that I had I wasn't allowed to create a reality where I would struggle financially or physically with a small child because I just wouldn't have it. So it actually was really liberating. And so that was one thing. And I was experiencing that. And then I found this incredible joy and purpose in being pregnant. And the Joan of Arc quote kept coming to my mind, which was something like, I'm not afraid I was born for this. And hopefully that's how every woman feels at some point during their pregnancy. If you are a pregnant woman, because I know there are a lot of you guys right now, kindred spirits, I wish that feeling on you because it was really great. And so I was going through the preparations for the holidays and I was thinking that this was going to be a pregnant holiday, which I was really excited about actually because it was turning into a really beautiful experience. And I miscarried on Thanksgiving. And one of the first things that happened, and I'm not going to go too deeply into, you know, the female body drama, but I'm going to go a little bit into it because I need to to explain it. So if that kind of stuff really freaks you out, if you're male or female, I would recommend maybe not watching this video. But it's not, it's not too gory detail. So anyway, think this was one of the Thanksgivings where I was responsible for most of the food. Granted, there weren't very many people, but still, there's a lot of cooking. So. In the morning, before all the cooking started, I was doing energy work, super intense energy work on a friend of mine. And then what happened was the child's spirit came through and I felt her moving all around the aura of the person I was working on like Quicksilver, like sliding all around and just kind of ferrying it up from place to place, you know, like how Tinkerbell moves. And she said to me, this is great. Look at how much energy work I can do because I'm not limited by a body. And I was like, yeah, that's great. So that was the last communication I had with her. So I thought she was just showing me why she was enjoying not being incarnate as compared to being incarnate, but what ended up happening was she left me a couple hours later. And so this is where the gory details are gonna come just because it's just true. I mean, 
first you feel a little pain and then things start happening in your body that tell you that you're losing the pregnancy. It's not the first time this happened to me, which is trippy, and I'll come back to that too. So, yeah, she was leaving, and I realized that that was her telling me goodbye and telling me why she was leaving, that she had kind of sampled the whole physical body experience, and she didn't want to do it. She wanted to remain non-incarnate at least for a while longer. She didn't specify as whether she would come back to me or us again, if, if and when there's another child. But it was super intense, super tragic. Rather than this being the holidays of pregnancy, it was the holidays of miscarriage. And so there's this one moment where I'm sitting, standing rather, in front of the stove, stirring two different things that are cooking, right? Both hands. Looking at both, they're very different foods, looking at both of them, trying to keep both of them going as I'm viscerally, physically feeling what, I'm just going to be honest, my dead child leaving my body. It was awful. <laughs> it was awful. And it was heartbreaking. And it was just pretty much all of the bad stuff that you can think. And, and so I was extremely well supported through it. Um, my partner was amazing. And one of the things that she told, she being the child, not the partner, partner's a guy, <laughs> one of the things that the child told me after leaving was that she showed both of us, because my partner's an intuitive as well, she showed both of us how her presence there in just a few weeks made us go months or even years faster in the relationship than we would have, because we kind of just had to bond. And we might have danced around it because both of us are very independently minded, not really loving relationshipy people because I find in my history relationships have often been, often been very limiting. So I wasn't one to really dive into a relationship, but this kind of made me do it and it actually felt really wonderful because I was with someone who could handle the amount of energy that I channel through, which is kind of a lot and it ends up burning a lot of people out, just to be honest. Anyway, so... Yeah, that's what happened. And I asked, I said, well, why did you come? And it was to have the physical experience and to provide the assistance of realizing that you could manifest whatever you wanted and you weren't limited by enculturated beliefs and also for the relationship intensity to bring it forward and to bring certain things through. And he and I both had incredibly powerful releasing experiences after that. I cried harder than I think I ever have before, and I felt like there was an ocean moving through me, an entire ocean. And I know that that was only like 15%. So there's still actually a lot more that's moving out of my energy field. You intuitives watching this, you probably can see it and feel it. Okay, so why did this happen? And why am I sharing this with you? <laughs> it's a very private thing, yeah. Well, when I asked, I was told in meditation that something that's going on right now it's actually pretty exciting, is that a new group is coming through that hasn't incarnated on this planet before. So they're coming through. And I know a lot of beautiful light worker, amazing goddessy women are pregnant right now. So those are likely your children. But also what a lot of them are doing is kind of moving into form for a while, checking it out, kind of creating the templates for them to incarnate fully and then leaving again, just to do like a little push forward at a time to create the space for this entire, I don't know, race, pod, cycle, group, I don't know, of, of beings to come through. And I was also told that because like I said, this is not the first miscarriage I've had, it's the first one that was so conscious and, and the longest one I've had, the longest pregnancy I've had. And I was told that one of the because I did ask, I was like, well, why the hell do I keep randomly getting pregnant where it doesn't make sense that I shouldn't, it shouldn't happen over the course of my life? You know, it's not the first time it's happened. It's happened one or two other times since I've reached adulthood, which has been a while. Anyway. And why is this, why is this happening? Why does that keep happening? Why can't I bring a child to term? Why am I weirdly made pregnant if the child's just gonna leave? And those of you who know about extraterrestrial kind of stuff probably recognize some of this because I know it's happened to a lot of you. I hear the flame, but I don't see it. Weird. Anyway. I was told that the, the short pregnancies are coming in to prepare my second chakra because I have a lot of second chakra damage from this lifetime and other lifetimes when the 
tradition of the divine feminine was kind of killed and maimed and injured. I carry a lot of that in me. So they were saying that they were coming into prayer my second chakra. And then the questions were, well, what the heck? Why do I have such a jacked up second chakra that I have to have these really painful, really intense experiences? And they said, well, it's not so much that your second chakra is jacked up. It's that what's going to come through you is super intense and it needs a lot of preparation. So, okay, that made sense. But the reason I'm sharing this with you guys, because it's a pretty private thing. I don't usually talk about this kind of stuff in my videos. Is because... I was told by my homies on the other dimensional landscapes <laughs> that that's going to happen to a lot of women. Weird pregnancies that don't make sense, you shouldn't be pregnant. Some of you guys might even have pregnancy symptoms if you haven't even been with a partner, just saying. And then miscarriages early in the pregnancy because this whole new wave of people's coming through. Now this might not be true for you and that's fine, but if it is true for you and if it is happening, you're not alone. The day after I got that piece of intel from my guides, I spoke to one of my very favorite people, a very fairy friend of mine who travels the world a lot. She told me that she had just had a very similar experience the previous month, so it's perfect confirmation that it is happening. I have another friend who's an amazing artist who was actually having that happen as I thought, well, as I was pregnant, not I thought I was, I actually was. But she thought she was too, and then she wasn't. So, but there is a difference between not being pregnant and being pregnant and losing a child. Your body tells you it is different. If you guys have experienced this, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's what's going on. New wave of light worker peeps coming in, um, super intense experiences. And I also think that there's a lot of trial by fire going on. There's a lot of difficult stuff going on. This is the winter, it's the underworld, it's the dark time. So. We're going through it. It's happening. It's happening to all of us. And those of you men who are with women who are experiencing this, you guys are amazing too because you got to hold a lot of space for this kind of stuff to happen. So thank you for your work. Often the men's role in this kind of situation where pregnancies happen and they end in miscarriage or abortion, things like that, the men have a really interesting time trying to integrate it because there's not a place in our society. There's not a place in our society in our society to mourn an unborn baby, especially an unborn baby that was only gestating for a month, for even for the women, much less for the men. You're supposed to go about your life and forget that, say, like what we did, name the child with a pre-birth name because it's actually Tony's idea to name the child with a pre-birth name because they don't want to call it it or he or she, he, she, the child, the baby, whatever, whatever. So we named her for the gestation. And so she was a being. And she died, she left. And there's pain and there's reaction that happens and growth and beauty and connection and loud airplanes flying overhead and you know, it's the whole thing. But I'll stop rambling now, that's what's going on. Now we will return to regularly scheduled <laughs> light work. And I do have a seminar happening tomorrow night. It's two hours long. I'll put the link from it below. And I just wanna thank you guys again for all of your awesomeness because I travel a lot, obviously, <laughs> and as I am traveling, I don't have very many experiences of a in-person support group. So I've heard one of the things that people majorly need during times like this are friends and family supporting them. So you guys who have given me love and encouragement and awesome words, it is really, really wonderful, and thank you so much. I love all of you. Go in peace. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful Christmas. There's a lot happening right now, so embrace it and recognize your awesomeness and dance in it and feel how you feel. All right? I'll talk to you again very soon.